The Panthers raised the banner on Tuesday night, dominated the Bruins, and gave us a little bit of a surprise postgame. We'll break that down and more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, October 9th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Man 12 follow the show account on X and Instagram at L underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix today's episode is brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nhl for 20 dollars off your first purchase and you could do that all on game time and florida panther fans grateful to be back here on the show once again to discuss everything of all the festivities that happened on opening night as the doors were open early in front of a crowd of 19,813 from sunrise florida as the fans were watching the game on game seven of the Stanley Cup final on the Jumbotron, getting it ready, and then the and then the banner raising as the first in Florida Panthers history and a historic night. And the and the Panthers, they had to play a hockey game and come out dominant in a six four regulation win over the Boston Bruins in a game that was a little close at the end, but the final score does not say the whole story of how dominant the florida panthers truly were but it is a wednesday which means it, it is a wine and wednesday edition of the show and a little bit of a different type of wine and wednesday uh, this week as we have an in-person podcast here with jacob wine on on another edition of the show jacob this is our second in-person podcast that we've done over the history of the show the last one we did was i believe during the second round of the leaf series two two seasons ago now and now another one. And to and for this one on the night, the Florida Panthers raising their Stanley Cup championship banner to the Rafters. And welcome back to the show, my friend. And grateful to have you back here. And what a night it was last night. Yeah, always awesome to be here. And you're right. It was the last time we did uh, an in-person show was after that, uh, that Leafs game that the Panthers lost. Then we didn't watch any more games together in person <laughs> after that. Uh, just our, our superstitions. But um yeah, it was that was an awesome, awesome night from start to finish. Uh, I thought the the banner raising was perfectly executed. I thought um, everything about the pregame production was awesome. It got everybody going, um, and then the Panthers came out on fire. Um, the The first period was the best first period you could ask for to start a season, and they didn't look back from there. Um, it, it was it was fast paced offense. It was lockdown defense. It was it was the aggressiveness, the um, the physicality. It was all there. Uh, and then just per usual, uh, the Panthers getting in the Bruins heads, uh, forcing some really stupid penalties from Boston. Boston seemed a little bit more focused on getting even than, than winning a hockey game. And the Panthers took advantage. Yeah. And, and I think about for, for just the night in general for the Panthers, I mean, we, I, I was expressing concerns about how they were going to come out after such an emotional night. But I mean, even for when they, when they came out with the, with, with the Stanley cup and, and also the presentation of the of the banner. I mean, it was quick. It was it was it was just get 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 the get get it over with and get to the game. There wasn't much of jumping up and down. I remember I, the one the one banner raise I think of a lot is the Colorado Avalanche when they were welcoming in the Chicago Blackhawks. And then I remember Jack Johnson also joined in as he was part of the Blackhawks and uh, in that, but part of the Colorado Avalanche the year before. But it was business as usual. And, and fairly quick. And also Palm Race was giving a lot of credit to the fans on just how how hyped up they were. And it really, truly manifested on the ice. I mean, between them bringing the cup and then by the time puck drop happened, I mean, it was less than less than 10 minutes, five, five minutes around there in that in that range. And just the refocusing of your mind to, to get back into what Panthers hockey was. This is a, a very similar to what we've seen last season and, and the year before where, where the Panthers trying to get to their game and just being a-holes, to put it nicely, on, on the ice like we saw on on the night. Yeah, and I thought I thought um, 
part of that was just the the lineup choice to start the game. I love that he started with the with the Lundell, Listerin, and Samuskevich line to start the game. Um, you throw out that line, you know they're going to be responsible. You know they're not going to do anything stupid. They're going to take a quick shift. They're going to get a puck deep um, and just get get their feet going, get right into the game. I thought that was thought that was brilliant. Start the game with that group. Um, but yeah, you're right. It, the the whole ceremony, everything went by quick. I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of lingering on on last year. You want to celebrate it, but you don't want to linger on it. Uh, you move you move right into the the first game of this season, and there really was no drop off. And we we see that sometimes early season. We'll we'll see teams have like their their Stanley Cup hangover a little bit, but then there's also teams that you can tell they benefit from having played hockey more recently than other teams. And I think um, I think the Panthers looked like a team that had played hockey more recently than the Bruins did. Uh, and, and we're not going to overstate the fact that uh, that Boston didn't have Swayman in net. Um, that the goalie situation was always going to be weird coming into this game for Boston. But uh, I, I think we, what the Panthers did best was take advantage of that. Um, they, they knew that that might be uh, an area of weakness going into this game for Boston. Uh, they put a ton of pucks on net in the first period. I think they got up to something around 15 or 16 in the first period um, and, and took it to them from there. But I, I thought, yeah, I, I didn't feel any drop off. I didn't feel any Stanley Cup hangover in the way they played. Um, it remains to be seen whether we'll see any of that, but early results looked really, really good. I thought they they played with maximum effort to start the season. Yeah, and then at, at one point, twelve to one in the shot discrepancy yep. between the between the two, getting pucks deep, and also for with the Boston Bruins and having a hard time just breaking out of their zone, just anticipating the passes, battling on, and then what they were what they were able to do in like the first two the first few goals and just battling on battling in, in the corner getting it back to the point and then a shot and then off a rebound and then off the rush uh off a rebound as well and then the drop pass where they they weren't converting early on those drop passes but then trying again and then in the case of uh in, in the case of sam bennett uh getting 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 off a rebound from on the drop of aj greer and then brandon carlo bumping him into Jonas corpusalo there i mean it, it's just taking advantage of what was given to you and as you spoke on the goalie situation as well and then also like you said focus on more of the of the post whistle stuff instead of the the game for the Boston Bruins I mean we saw David Poston not go at it uh, again uh, again with Matthew Kachuk I mean Nikita Zadorov newcomer for the Boston Bruins uh going to the box a few times AJ Greer made his presence felt early on with his fight uh, in 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 the game and also Erod the Max Jones looked to try to maybe make a a swipe at at Erod and then strikes a linesman instead. So that that's another thing for just getting in 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 the in in the head of the opposition for the night and just for the Panthers just getting getting that emotional edge and in, into into putting into getting their their game. I mean, and also the goals they gave up. I mean, for for them. I mean, responding with a shorthanded goal after they gave up a shorthanded goal to uh, two. Um, and what a battle from Sam Reinhardt to just get around right. Charlie McAvoy and then get beat Corpusalo on the far side <laughs> on that. I mean, we see, uh, I, I went back to, I believe it was goal against Tampa Bay last year where he was going around Victor Hedman yep. on the road. Same play. It, it was, it was almost, it was almost identical <laughs> to that. So just the, the, pa the Panthers and just battling it, it, it just a lot of the times really came down to puck battles. Yeah, and a lot of their a lot of their chances, like you said, like off the drop passes. Um, Sam Bennett scores both his goals uh, really off of rebounds, uh, off of off of net drives. Um, uh, Etu Lustrainen scores his goal right in the paint. Um, uh, I'm trying to think uh, outside of Reinhardt and and Erod, uh, the goals really they they weren't coming from from distance. They weren't coming from the the long range shots. It was a lot of stuff right at the net, um, which that's what you want to see. And and, and Boston in particular, they could not love the fact that Sam Bennett is the guy who, who kills him. Uh, he scores the first goal of the season, uh, scores a second goal in the game, gets first star. Um, I think that's poetic because Boston spent the entire offseason probably thinking of one person, and that's Sam Bennett. Um, I didn't really see a whole lot of extracurriculars from Brad Marchand. I figured he and Bennett might have words, maybe even drop them. Uh, that ended up not happening. Marchand made it clear he had no ill will towards him, so there's that, but uh, what, what was interesting to me was a lot of the Bruins newcomers were were the guys trying to get involved and and sort of jump themselves into the rivalry. And, and you think Max Jones uh, took a couple of really dumb penalties. Uh, Nikita Zadorov took a couple of really stupid penalties and just 
from the opening shift, he goes after Matthew Samuskevich. And then later on in the game, he, he's, he's getting involved in every post whistle scrum. He's fighting everybody he can uh, and, and really didn't make an impact on the game outside of that. So I think, um, I think the Panthers got definitely got into the heads of the opposition. Um, the Kachuk Pasternak thing is still going on. I, I think that's kind of funny, but also it's good for the game. Uh, when, when you have those sort of interpersonal rivalries between star players, um, that, that's good for the sport. So uh, I, I think that's cool. Uh, I wish the Bruins would let Pasternak handle his business on his own a little bit more. I felt like every time uh, he was in a conversation with Kachuk, someone's running over and grabbing Chucky and trying to tackle him. It's just like, they're grown men, let them handle it. But I thought overall, Panthers stayed even keeled. They kept their they kept uh, their their mentality on business. They they played great hockey between the whistles and then post whistle stuff kind of baited Boston into some really really uh, stupid. I won't say uncharacteristic because it is kind of characteristic for how this rivalry has gone. But they baited Boston into some things that Boston would probably like to have back. Yeah, and and even after the the second goal by Bennett and Frederick tell asking Chucky if he wanted to go and not drop and then him not taking off the gloves. I mean, we could argue on whether that's good for the game or not. Uh, Frederick said it was uh, disrespecting the game, but hey, it benefited the Panthers in just getting a, a power play there for 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 them. So the, that that's another thing. But uh, we're going to transition over to segment number two, where we're going to discuss more of our three stars of the game and when we thought the game was won for the Panthers. We're going dis- to going to discuss that more next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. And the Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to, to save more on sports, comedy, concert, theater, and more. And the seat views, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. And it's the lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Game Time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Turns apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N. NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. And I'd like to thank you guys once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Winans Wednesday edition of the show, an in-person show on this Wednesday, October 9th edition of the show, where the Florida Panthers are coming off a six to four victory over the Boston Bruins, and also in this game for uh, the Panthers, the crowd was chanting, uh, we want Swayman during it. And, I'm, and I got a message from Jackson Holzer, a former um, previous guest of the show and host of Locked on Syracuse on, and he's like, no, you don't. And I'm like, yes, no, no, you don't. <laughs> you don't want Jeremy Swayman. And we spoke about the, the situation with the goaltender tender for Jonas Corposalo in, in the crease, but also for the the Panthers and just the the first game jitters that happens for everyone even regardless of whether you win or lose that's something that Sam Reinhardt spoke but also Mackie Semeskevich in, in this one the the second the first the, the first goal that the second goal excuse me that the Boston Bruins gave up a little bit of a collision with the referee and then uh, the pan the Bruins go the other way and I mean you think about the different goals that the Bruins score I mean Defensive zone draw, regroup in the in the neutral zone, and then bar- bounces off Barkov and 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 Zaka scores, and then on that power play off right off a deflection off of um, Kulikov, and then through the legs of Bob. So, really, the, how the Panthers uh, gave up the goals, very very pleased due to not allowing it on the cycle, which is what what they're what the Panthers are best at if they're forcing the opposition uh, off the cycle, and we saw that definitely towards in the Stanley Cup final when. When it's a speed team, even though the Bruins aren't really that speed type of team, you you really saw that the Panthers re- really stuck stuck in. And even their first few shots of the game, there were mostly high point shots for for them, and just very composed and very still in in the in their own end. Yeah, we didn't see a lot of. And what Boston likes to do is is they like to use their their size uh, and and kind of the weight of their their forward group and, and the D on the back end uh, to keep pucks in the zone. And, and cycle you till your legs are dead. Uh, and that's where they really generate their chances. Uh, and we didn't see the, the Bruins get a lot of that. 
Um, that, that's really the strength of their game is the cycle game, the physicality game, and just the, their, uh, their power forwards, the, the big guys that keep the puck in the zone. The Panthers didn't allow much of that at all. It, it wasn't a lot of sustained zone time. Uh, the Bruins' goals, really, they, they come off of special teams and they come off of a, a couple of bad breaks. Uh, like you said, Boquist gets hurt um, on, on the power play and the puck takes a really strange bounce as they're trying to figure out the new, the new sort of unit there with Ekblad at the top. Uh, which isn't what they planned for going into the game. Uh, and it just takes a really ugly bounce, and, and, and they give up a shorty. And I thought the response after that was fantastic. The Panthers get a shorty of their own shortly after that. Um, and then beyond that, there's there's the Mackey play where he gets uh, – I, I, I texted in our group chat during the game. He got cronwalled by the ref on that one. A um, little bit of, uh, of rookie luck there. It's a tough bounce, tough break, but they uh, didn't let that derail their game. Um and overall, the two goals late in the game, you'd like to see them a little bit tighter defensively, not give those up. Um, the posture knock one, the power play, we could we could debate whether or not that was even a penalty on Belinskis uh, going into that. It didn't look like one, but um, yeah, a little tighter at the end maybe, but but the goals that they gave up weren't really backbreaking. It wasn't like they were out of their game or out of their style. It wasn't anything that, that would be cause for alarm going forward. Um, just yeah, a little bit tighter defensively at the end. You'd like to close out games a little bit better, but I, I didn't. I didn't see anything that would I, that I would consider alarming uh, from their play style at all. And then uh, they tend not to give up a whole lot of rush goal, a lot of rush chances. So um, I'm not concerned. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not not concerned either based on how uh, how structured they were in in their own end. But uh, three stars of the game. Uh, had a I switched the I switched mine versus what the media vote was for what what the, it was it was released. But third star had Sam Sam Reinhardt two points on a night, including that shorthanded goal. Very very great in it is in his own and as always, Evan Rodriguez uh, get, gets gets in on the scoring for for the Panthers. And number one star for me on on opening night was Sam Bennett with those two goals and really set the tone. And in a contract year. Which we're going to talk someone about someone else real quick about someone who is in a contract year, but the what Sam Bennett could do possibly in a year where I know that I've talked about possibly his future on possibly the Panthers moving on uh, from him after this year based on possibly Lundell graduating, but man, how how he continues to gain the zone, get the puck behind the D, and also get behind, and also ballot it out for for his strength and just getting it and especially in the corners and half walls to get it back to the point and and for the the panthers to get in in the in the face of the goaltenders to not not have them see the puck clearly for them sam bennett for for me is my number one star of of the night uh who are your who are your three stars of the game yeah so i'm going to kind of cheat a little bit on the third one because it's not going to be one person but i love the left side of the panthers defense um i thought Ubis Belinskis made some incredible defensive plays. Um, just a, a tremendous skater. I thought he was fantastic. Um, Nico Mikola was rock solid, and Gustav Forsling again shows why he's the number one defenseman in the NHL. Um, the the defense on on Pasternak was smothering that whole game. Uh, it's almost a shame that he that he even gets a point or gets a goal at the end of the game because it, it wasn't exactly like he. Uh, he, he, he lit them on fire at all. He, I, I won't say it wasn't earned. Every goal in the NHL is earned, but um, the, the defense on him was, was fantastic the entire game. I love the way they played against him. Um, so I, the left side of the defense is, is my third star. My second star uh, is Sam Reinhart. I thought he played a fantastic game. He took some big hits. You'd like to see him uh, get out of the way of and not take, but that's kind of his game. He, he'll take a hit to make a play and bounce right back up. Uh, his shorthanded goal was huge, turned the tide, uh, got the momentum right back in the Panthers' favor. Um, and that's a, just an incredible one-on-one -on -one play against a fantastic defenseman. Uh, Charlie McAvoy is a great defenseman. And to, to pull that play off um, at, at that speed, uh, a quick quick inside-out move, and, and to get that shot far side was pretty ridiculous. And then first star, uh, it's obvious, it's Sam Bennett. He was the best player on the ice. Um, from puck drop to the end of the game, best player on the ice, scores the goals, um, plays physical and, and, and out of everybody outside, anyone outside of Matthew Kachuk, uh, Sam Bennett was the one who irritated Boston the most in that game. Everyone wanted a piece of Sam Bennett and he responded with two goals and really kind of helped run them out of the building. So Sam Bennett's my number one star. No, no doubt. And, uh, we're, since we're in the regular season again and playing and, and playing some meaningful games, it's also a, a good time for us to once again, discuss the moment where we thought the game was won. And for me, 
when Sergey Bobrovsky mishandled the puck in their own end and the and the puck was starting to trickle outside of the trapezoid and then having a little bit of a panic and then Brazo was trying to have that wrap around and then Erod with this with having his stick right on the goal line to get that puck out it was still a multi goal lead but still that could have been a, such a crucial part of the game where it could have really shifted the moment momentum for the, the for the Bruins and also there was a few times where Bob wasn't all the way in it, in his net and then Zaka goes up the right wing and then go and then the puck goes right through the blue paint and then just avoided a little bit of a disaster but also but also there was another point in the in in the game where where Bob made an incredible save on Brad Marchand and then right before Sam Reinhart scored shorthanded but but the moment where I thought the, the, it was for sure a win that the Erod defensive play uh, in in their own end, right on the right on the goal line. How about you? Yeah, that was a remarkable stop from Erod. Uh, desperation play. Uh, he came up limping a little bit afterwards, and everyone's holding their breath. But it was that was insane. Um, moment where I thought the game was won. Uh, it, it was it was kind of a, a two play swing, and you just barely touched on it there. But uh, the huge save from Bob, uh, where Brad Marchand's right in front of the net, and the puck looked like it sort of hit either like glanced off the crossbar and dropped right behind Bob, and he. Uh, quickly closes his legs together, then lays down on it. Um, that goes in. It could be a, it's a two-two game, um, but Bob makes that save, and just just barely after that, uh, Sam Reinhart scores to make it three-one. Uh, that's that's a two-goal play right there. Um, I thought be, it was in. Yeah, I thought it was in too. And it, it could be two-two. It ends up three-one, and I feel like once that happened for the Panthers, they weren't going to give that up. Uh, it's rare to see the Panthers give up a two-goal lead. Uh, and lose a game. So I thought I thought from from that point, that's when the Panthers had the game won. You get the big save on one end, and you get the Sam Reinhardt goal on the other end. Uh, and I feel like we've heard that before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, a whole a whole bunch of uh, pucks bouncing, sweep it out, get a quick get a quick out, and then the, the defense can't set, and and the goal and the goaltender may have to play above his crease more, and 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 be in a little bit of a panic, and that's Florida Panthers hockey in a nutshell of something that we've experienced under under this system for for the Cats. But we're going to transition over to segment number three, where we're going to give you guys an injury update on Ad, Adam Boquist, our thoughts on the power play with Ekblad running it, with everyone moved up, and also. An, our initial thoughts on a little bit of a surprise that management had for us post game. We're going to discuss that more next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more on the same page where you can place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Once again, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. And you could do that all at fanduel.com. And once again, I'd like to thank you guys for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Wednesday, an in-person show between myself and Jacob Winans as we continue to recap the Panthers' 6-4 to win over the Boston Bruins on banner-raising night from Emirate Bank Arena, which we were both there last night. Also great to see Nick Fairbanks in person, Joey Ganzi, Florida Panthers historian Francisco Aporta, Alex from Panther Prairie, and, and everyone also, and also my fellow people in the press box and Alex Krocek of Lemon City Live, Alex Baumgartner, Five Reasons Sports, and everyone involved there. Hope, sorry if I miss anybody on the post game. But Paul Maurice also discussed more about the status of Adam Boquist and just said he was going to get imaged uh, today. Uh, and so, but we are not going to really find out. I'm <laughs> with that clear of the puck, which is not intentional by Brandon Carlo. Maybe a little bit of a screen as he was, you, it was uh, broken out. So he didn't have time to react there. And <laughs> we, not the first time that Adam Boquist has been hit by in the face with a puck. He was on the bench when he was with in the Columbus and, and was hit in the face with a puck while he was uh, there. So that, that is a little, the, that is the update that we have now on it. So that forced Aaron Ekblad to move up a spot from power play two to one as they were using two defense two D on that second unit, and then Forsling going to that second unit. And the minutes 
25, 26 minutes for both Ekblad and Forzing. They're minute, minute munchers for, for the for the cats there. But also, you know, if there's one thing to really nitpick on the on the night, which is not too big of a deal, your 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 unit is not the same from what you originally had planned. It's just the lack of second chance opportunities for the Panthers. But also Aaron Ekblad didn't really have this puck much on his stick. He kept moving. He wasn't mm-hmm. hesitating with getting it to the flank and then and then getting it back low, back down low and then creating a shot from the point with the screen for a second chance opportunity uh, for trying a second chance opportunity is just Boston was really great in their their retrievals after that so but that's the really the only criticism I might have but it's something very small yeah I didn't think the power play looked too bad um I think Ekblad Ekblad being there uh for however long he's there depending on Bookless injury only concern I really have is just giving up some shorthanded chances, just given his his uh, sort of lack of foot speed uh, at the point. And that's a, that's a known knock on his game. He's not the quickest skater. Uh, so what that means is just positioning has to be rock solid when Neckblad's running it. Um, he's not as fast as Boquist, and, and he's definitely not as fast as what we're used to with Brandon Montour back there. Um, so the positioning has to be good. You can't play around with the puck at the point because it's, it's going to be tough for Neckblad to, to recover. A lot of times uh, teams have their their – third and fourth line speedsters out killing penalties. So um, it's tough to track those guys down if you give up a puck and, and, and you give up a breakaway. But um, I think there was only one chance where the Panthers really had a, a look like that. It was played well defensively. Um, the the bad bounce uh, after Boquist gets hurt, I'm not really that concerned about it. It was an unfortunate bounce. Um, I would like to see a little bit more traffic in front uh, on the power play. I felt like they, they moved the puck well. Uh, they were a little bit passive, but that's fine. Early in the season, you want everyone to get their touches. Uh, and and I'm, I'm okay with them passing it around, getting used to the puck movement. That's completely fine for me. Um, and the Panthers did get to the uh, to the Kachuk to Reinhardt bumper play at least once in that game. Got a great chance off of it. You know that's going to be there this season. Uh, Reinhardt will score a bunch of goals like that. Um, so I, I like the way the puck moved. Um, if anything, just a little bit more traffic in front, but I'm not, not a cause for concern at all. And I thought Boquist before he got hurt, looked really good there. Mm -hmm. Um, clearly not afraid to shoot the puck. Uh, he, 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 uh, teed up a one timer early in in his uh, first power play opportunity. Um, he's, he's got really good feet, moves the puck. Well, uh, resembles Brandon Montour a lot up there. I think, I think he's going to do just fine. We hope, and definitely we hope we hope that he's okay. And also his brother Jesper Boquist, had interception in the neutral zone, drove Great up dro- drove up the uh, slot, and then had that set up to Joe Nagajevich on that quick uh, two on one there. So another goal right in the paint. Mm-hmm. That was the mo. Yeah, that was the that was the that was for the Panthers just getting those higher percentage shots as the as uh, as they as you give yourself a better chance to get on the score sheet for for them but also after the game before we wrap up on on this uh this morning's uh show for the lockdown florida panthers podcast we were waiting a little bit in the media room after we spoke with paul maurice and is saying the pr department was saying we have a little bit of a surprise for you and i was thinking i was thinking the stanley cup but, but i see we see bill zito and carver hey walking in and the moment i thought i said contract extension it has to be a contract extension and then yes Eight eight years, seven million seven million per season for Carter Rahegi. We're gonna break down more of the cap uh, uh, financials and everything tomorrow. But outside outside of the numbers and what and just the what Verhage has brought with being drafted by T- Toronto, cut twice by the Islanders, being in the ECHL, leading goal scorer in the AHL, to now an eight year deal. Now the Panthers, <laughs> the Panthers five players. Five core players this year are making less, almost nine million less than the Maple Leafs' core four players. That's something I tweeted out earlier, and they they have a championship to their name. But Carver Hagee, an extension, something that we've been pounding the table for, and and we got we got our wish with Carver Hagee now here for eight more seasons after this year, which his contract will end in twenty thirty three. So just your excitement level on getting on the Panthers getting this done. Yeah, it's through the roof because you don't want this to drag on through the season. Uh, and if he comes out and scores another 40 goals this year, that price could go up. Um, and and if he hit if he hit free agency, I guarantee he would get a lot more than uh, than what he signed for yesterday. So uh, it's it's another example of great business from Bill Zito. Uh, Verhage's locked in uh, long term. Uh, I'm sure when you discuss the the cap situation tomorrow, you'll you'll touch on the fact that uh, 
it's not a contract that the Panthers can easily get out of. <laughs> um, so they're, this, this is a, a long-term marriage. Uh, and, and you hope that uh, Verhage continues his play. He shows no signs of not continuing uh, his play. Um, definitely not a flash in the pan. It, it's this is this is who he is. Uh, this is the player he is. And, and you, the Panthers needed to take care of him and keep him long term. Uh, but I'm excited for him too because um, one, he takes a very team friendly deal, very team friendly, uh, given the AAV. And, and obviously, most of it is signing bonus. So, but like we said, it's not something the Panthers can really get out of. But um, I don't think they, they're going to want to at any point. With the cap going up, that's a fantastic deal. Um, you keep a core player involved. You keep a, a, your best playoff performer involved. Um, you take care of him long term because he's played on discounts for the last several seasons in Florida. He's outplayed every contract he's had as a Panther. Uh, so you want to take care of him in that way. Uh, and, and, yeah, he's uh, just the, the, the poster for a hard worker. He's, he's played through every level of professional hockey on his way uh, to – to the, the place he is now. He's a two-time Stanley Cup champion. Uh, he's, he's got his name on the cup for both Florida teams. Um, played very different roles on those two teams, but uh, he's, he's a star player, and, and you can get a star player locked up for that AAV. Uh, I'm thrilled. That's, that's a big one. It helps keep the Panthers' cup window open. Yeah, and, and for you, you, told, you said playing different roles and now adjusting and now, and we're also going to see him adjust as the years go on. As, as he's getting older and the and the Panthers, you know, my at, at a certain point, maybe like three or four years down the line, are probably going to have to replenish some of the youth on their team with leading, leading with the with with the veterans as, as they will be just uh, more grown into this market and just everything for for them for for, for the play on the ice too. And, and one thing I will say about about how this contract is going to age reason I'm not concerned about it is because so much of his game is not dependent on, on like what I would call like youthful traits. His shot isn't going to go anywhere. His shot is his shot. Mm. Uh, his, his work ethic, his, his uh, for checking all of those things, the intangibles, those, those aren't going anywhere. He's, he's going to be the hardest worker on the ice when he's out there. Um, so for those reasons, I think his contract could age really, really well. I don't think you can really expect a big drop off in his play. Um, because so much, so many of the skills that make him who he is, uh, those those don't just disappear with age. And, and I think, uh, if anything, his biggest skill is his clutch gene, and that definitely doesn't go anywhere with age. That, that you only get more and more comfortable in big moments the more of them you're in. So I think that that's another big advantage. And we're going to discuss more about the the clutch gene and and records that he could possibly break on tomorrow's edition of the show, along with how the Panthers are going to structure their roster from here on out and what percentage of the cap it could be by the time the contract ends. But Jacob, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this in-person edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast as the Panthers win 6-4 to four over the Boston Bruins and now are heading to Eastern Canada to face off against the Ottawa Senators right before right before uh recap right before wrapping up their road trip in the northeast a, a little bit of a back-to-back at the beginning of the week right before they return home next thursday against the vancouver canucks so jacob tell everybody where they can follow you online my friend yep you can follow me on x at jacob Winans eight uh, and i'll definitely be hanging around the arena for some more games coming up so looking forward to that too awesome man thank you so much and see you next week my friend looking forward to it and if you like what you're hearing Please subscribe to the podcast and so you'll be notified every single time the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows in the Lockdown NHL Network, including Lockdown NHL, Lockdown Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Stu Ronan, and Lockdown NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Jacob Winans, and you've been listening to the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Where it's your team every day.